Welcome back, danglers. We are gathered here today in the outdoor greatness to do a little trout fishing. Today we got a family camping trip, and we're going to be doing catching, cleaning, and cooking right here at the campfire. It's also getting cold right now, guys. Go to GoonSquad.com. Use my promo code LFG. Save on the new hoodies and apparel. And don't forget, Slurp and Spoon, Shad Wagon, they've dropped now. So winter, fall, fishing, lures. We're also going to be using conventional tackle with lures as well as fly. We're going to be going over some of the situations where one is better than the other. So without further ado, let's get out there on the water and give them a dangle. Okay guys, well, to start this day, we're just gonna get in the river. Oh my. We're in there, baby. Taking a little stick. Checking it twice. We're gonna find out if these trout want to play nice. Got ourselves a low flow. Oh yeah, I see them feeding out there already. Alright, starting out with a little, uh, this a little prototype spinner. Eighth ounce. Just a little Guggen, Guggen spinner blade. And we have the fly gear. We do have it. I've already had one. I got him. Oh my gosh, you're smoking it. I mean, this is crazy. There he is. Oh my gosh. I've gotten five, six hits. I think we're going to get our limit with the old, <laughs> with the old inline here. That's my goal. I want to get my, I want to get my meat with the inline and I want to come back with the fly. And I want to, I want to get dialed and really knock them down. Really like this standard white color in this low light too. Man, they were knocking it around so much, they tangled it. I've never actually seen that with an inline. Literally knocking it sideways. Oh yeah, boys, look at that. First one on the river this morning. Beautiful sunrise. Kids are still sleeping. Got a campfire started for him. Daddy's gonna come back a hero with three trout. Oh my gosh. They're just, they're smoking it. There he is. Oh my gosh, that one's tiny. I'm gonna let him go. Did not want him anyways. And I'm using the light. The light, I'm actually using the two-piece in uh, in the gold series, I'm not using the ultra ultra light, but this is this one's plenty for trout. You gotta have a soft rod because they just gyrate. They gyrate so much. You gotta take your time. Oh man, that's just a that's kind of a run in the mill. Might as well. Might as well put them on. Over the years now doing trout fishing, I've got my equipment so much more dialed. The biggest thing that I upgraded was the net. Going from a fabric net to a rubber net. That was a game changer. Because I was wasting so much time getting my lures out. All right, I think there's a couple more out there for me. They're jumping for joy. They're jumping for joy. They want to come home with me. Oh my goodness, they're jumping. Oh, dude, they're smacking this thing around like it's a hot potato. Look at this. Golly, they come off. God, they are, they are stacked. Oh, I do, I do not think that I've ever had this many bites on a spinner just right out of the gate. Like, I'm, I'm just going to get slapped right here. 
and I normally have to be very dialed with the retrieve get it to just touch the bottom I've not reeled it in and haven't had a bite oh gosh oh my gosh look at that guy he done he done loaded up on her oh yeah oh yeah for shizzle oh my gosh you guys i've got someone else's line i caught someone else's line that has a trout look at this someone broke this fish off like here's my lure right here man buddy i'm sorry i feel like i i kind of have to keep you so this guy ate some power bait reason I'm not being particular on the size for keeping is I think they're all gonna be about the same really around that 12 inch mark Let's see if we can knock out a third here oh yeah I'm already getting slapped oh, I'm not even having to retrieve that slow Let them do their deal. Let them do their deal. I don't know. I may, may hold off on keeping this one. Well, he made that decision. He said, I'm making the executive decision to get the hell out of here, sir. I'm pretty sure if I brought my kids down here, they could catch one. With this. Oh, my gosh. It's like... I think they just stocked them. I think they're fired up. This is a little guy. Wow. Yeah, no, he's like, he's real little. He's, a, he's my little Texas tornado. He's going crazy. There we go. Got him out. All right. One more decent size one for the necklace. I do like fishing this conventional though. Oh man, dude, I'm getting rocked. <laughs> it's insane. It's insane, guys. How many bites I'm getting? They're knocking slack in it. Look at this. This is wild. Absolutely just knocking slack. Look, they're jumping right here in front of me. Oh man. They're just all about the same. He, 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 he'll keep. He'll eat. Yeah, there we go. There's a good eater. Absolutely crushing him on the spinner. Sometimes this is the best method. If you're feeling a little nervous, like, oh man, this guy's got a little, he's got a little pizzazz. I can't can't quite handle it because trout I will tell you are very slippery I'll just kind of come in here I'll just kind of come in here with just one of the deals on the stringer in the net I'll just go up through that mouth and go through the gill and I'll just one hand it that way I've got I've got a safety hand where I can pin him I don't even need it now done deal he's on there and my net is attached it's attached to a cord but it's got a magnet and I put it right on the center of my back it was right up on top there I mean this this is just put the hammer down wind and grind put the old coffee grinder on him smack him dude I mean that guy just flapjacked me right there the gyrations in the pole is insane look at that right here right here in front of me it's probably figure eight one so i've got my i've got my nymphing fly rod on the shoreline and i think that's gonna be <laughs> silly because we don't we don't have much flow oh my gosh this guy we don't have much flow 
might, might put an indicator on them. I might just go straight line. Just get right out in front like this. Just, just do one. Just do them. Just do them straight up with a nympher. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about with nymph and all, we'll get to it. We'll show you. You know, sometimes you come, you come to these rivers like this that are stocked, and uh, in some places like the spinners, spinners work amazing. And other hard lures, not just spinners. And then in some places they they just the fly crushes them. It really just depends. Depends on if you got you got a ton of fly fishermen around. What are they seeing? So if you guys are gonna get into fly fishing for the first time, I will tell you another upgrade. I'm telling you some of my, my learning experiences. But one of the big ones was going from a neoprene wader, you know, just standard kind of wader. I got water on that lens, I just realized. Standard wader, go get it at Academy, you know buy like a pair every other year whenever I'm going on a random duck hunt or something it's not the deal can be done but it's not the deal you want to get some waders that are lightweight you can really move around in those neoprenes They're very constricting you try to step up on a rock or something like that not good these are just breathable so if you're doing this when it's you know 60 70 degrees outside it's pretty nice feeling so accomplished I already got my three I'm gonna go back get a cup of coffee this morning look at this it's a nightmare where I'm standing right now this is a this is like a, a dedicated nymph rod. What I really need is to cast out there with an indicator because there's not much current right now. This this system would be more like in the current. I got a little riffle or something and I'm trying to put it in the same spot every time where I know fish are sitting right there. This fish are kind of scattered out. There's a little bit of current. It's not putting them in a one consistent spot. So it'd be nice to have a an indicator, a bobber, just throw out there and, and let it float around. But I'm gonna see uh, see what this system will do. We'll play around with it. Can't forget our stick so we don't crash in the water. This is where it'll happen to. Right here at the edge. Oh, I did fall. I did fall, but I didn't fall all the way in. Seen it happen so many times right there. A stick that will tell you if you're about to get really wet, it will tell you where the big ass rocks are that you can trip on, and it uh, could save your could save your life, could save your buddy's life. Maybe he's hanging in there, just barely hanging on. He's got to he's got to extend a stick his way. I'm gonna try a little little hybrid mop nymph situation so the whole point of this rod with it being long and having a special kind of line on it it's not really good for casting it's more like braid as i would sit here like this with the current the current would be taking my line and i can i'm just watching my line to see the little moves in it got him nymphed him up there we go had to walk out there a little bit uh, a little different fight on the old 10 10 and a half foot fly pole this right here is just this is just for our own enjoyment we're not gonna eat these there we go a little mop fly dangle remove the stick and then we'll remove this 
little fly. Ooh. Hey, look at that. It's like a little grub unit. See you, buddy. Never even touched that fish. And that one hammered it, so I saw the line flinch. Just like you're throwing a, you know, a stick bait, weightless stick bait. You just see your line kind of twitch with the bass. Same thing. Except usually it's moving. The line's moving with the current. Literally just staring at the reflection of the fall leaf color off the glassy river. It's gorgeous. It's disrupting my view of my line though. There we go. Mmm, yes yeah, sir. You jump right next to me, that's fun. That long pole just bend. Isn't that awesome? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. Just patty spanking them this morning. I think we gotta do one more, folks. We gotta do one more of those. I gotta tell you, this I'm not dialed. This is not, I'm not on the jams. I'm not on the jams right now. I'll probably come back and get on the jams. I need, I need fly line and I need indicator. Come on, son. Come on, son. You think you're gonna snatch that fly away from me? I don't think so. there little buddy oh we'll do one more we'll do one more just crazy crazy action here there we go barbless love using those barbless don't have to mess with them That one's a good one to end on. Good tugger. Good tugger and jumper. Mm. Pull a little bit. Pull a little bit of drag. There you go. I think this is the biggest one. Biggest one I've had. Put you in the net, buddy. Yeah. I don't know. Just had a lot of pizzazz, gumption, moxie, whatever you want to call it. That fish had it. And that, sir, is the fish I'm going to end on for this morning. Flies out. Let him go under the waters. All right, let's take it back into camp. What is it, little buddy? Hello. You got gloves? You want to give me a high five with those gloves? Good one! Hi, hey, Daddy. Yeah, Daddy's chair. Hi, hey, Daddy. This is Daddy's chair right here. Hi, hey, Daddy, Mama. Mm-hmm. Hi, hey, Mama. That one's Mama's, and then Hi. the blue one's Emmy's. Hi, that, that's Ben's. That's yours. Eh. Yeah. I have returned with bounty, my dear. Mm. Trouts from the great, great and powerful river systems. 
Actually, all natural. When I saw you walking up with some trout, I go, he's, like, he's got dinner already. I got dinner. I got, I got dinner. And I mean, they're not, not very big. They're not very big, but you know. Not even 9 a.m. when you got dinner. Oh, Emmy, Emmy's wanting to say hi. What did you say? I said good morning, happy campers. Good morning, happy campers. You know what? I'm really proud of you. Give me a high five because you were thrown up last night. And you are coming back strong this morning because you love camping so much. And you're, you're fighting through it. You're a tough girl. You know, what do we got right here? We got some bacon? We got some stringy bacon. <laughs> What's wrong with that bacon? It's too large for the pan. A little bit of a cheat code, OSG brought some coffee and we also have an electric coffee machine. So we're not doing our, we're not having to boil our waters and all that. And we got an inverter inside the camper. Just heard the inverter kick on. And that will start making coffee. So we left the house at I think 97. Uh, ran the heater all last night, and now we're uh, we're sucking a lot of power out of there. Look at that, 60, 60 amps right there. 60 amps coming out, so 83% charge. So with the power upgrades we made on the on the camper, I'm gonna say this is a, this is like a 10 day excursion camper where you could. You could go 10 days if you had okay sun. If you had full sun, you could really stay out there indefinitely. But if you're powering through stuff like coffee maker and a heater and you know things to keep the family accoutrement, uh, basically, keep the family happy, it's about a 10 day camp. If it's me, I've just got like a bushcraft knife and a satchel forever. Stay out here forever. The Elite Gourmet. How much was that coffee maker? I think it was nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. That was one of the cheapest Amazon, and you were so against it. You're like, Why do we need to bring a coffee maker? I will tell you, we've used that coffee maker every oh. single day. You use it at home. <laughs> it came in on Amazon. <laughs> it's still trucking. It is. We have an espresso maker at home. I enjoy espresso. Kind of a coffee snob. Anyway. Stephanie will take the espresso machine and run uh, a double shot and then just fill it with water. And so it's it's wasting a lot of like good espresso, not just the taste, but also dollars. I, I can't handle so, it. <laughs> so body. I was like, you know what? Why don't you just get you a little coffee machine <laughs> so you don't have to waste my espresso by filling your cup with water. <laughs> anyway, she uses it all the time. I, I mean, even nice use it. Americana. <laughs> Yeah, she, a nice full-bodied yeah, full Americana. Full and, and now we use it on our camp trips as well. So it's pretty, pretty cool, honestly. Kids in the river, mama on the bank. Are you going to sit down on me? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, time to clean our trout. Look at that beautiful sight. So hopefully you guys have seen me clean trout before. Wow, that is a really big leaf. That's huge. Careful, Look at that one, guys. You want to go down there? Is that a sycamore? Ooh, yeah. It might be a sycamore. Not sure. Let me know in the comments. Hopefully, you've seen me clean some trout before. If you missed the Colorado series, this time's 10. All right. It just uh, beautiful scenery. Ended up getting our trout, doing some cooking. Uh, that's and I showed you guys a knife that. Uh, I ordered from Gentry Customs Camp Knife there. I actually ordered two. And this is the other one. And I've used this a couple of times cleaning deer now. This is a fully custom order. And uh, he makes one called, I think it's the Trekker. And I requested he make one similar to the Trekker, just make it as thin as possible for skinning and also just uh, a little skinnier like uh, a little bit long a long more elongated but still have a belly and he did a great job on that knife and never used it to clean trout so should be uh, 
pretty surgical. Went through those deer like a knife through butter. So right behind the head. You gotta be really careful with this knife. Up through the belly. This thing is just a razor. Put your index finger in there, thumb in that crease, and break down. That was a male right there, so we'll throw everything out in the river. Something I really love about this knife that I had on, a, on another knife that I requested uh, he put on here on the handle, it's textured micarta, so it's it's like rocky textured, very aggressive. So when you're elbow deep in a deer, or in this case, I got slippery trout juice on, on my hands, this thing is solid in your hand. So if you can order a custom knife, I recommend that textured micarta if you're gonna get a skinning knife or just a knife for doing stuff like this. It just gives you so much, so much grip. Let's take my thumb and I press all that, all that dark stuff off the spine. Give it a good rinse and then throw it in a Ziploc. Which hopefully I put in my, uh, my vest here. There we go. Not my vest, my performance hoodie. There we go. Now we'll do the other two and we'll be cooking those up for dinner. Trout are prepped. We're gonna be cooking them over the campfire tonight, but we're gonna go out again with the proper setup. Got him. I see him feeding now. Oh yeah, a little jump right in front. That's always fun. Get him out with that barbless. Turn him back. Hmm, that's some of the juice. Got him. Hey buddy. There he goes. Oh, got him. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how many that is, but it is a solid thrashing. Well, y'all, we pretty much pulsated them out there. I think I caught over 30. Uh, fishing that little, it's called a producer, but it just looks like a tiny crappie jig is all it is. With this rod, I'm casting out and I have this indicator, monofilament, and then I tied a fluorocarbon leader, a 5X leader, and then I put that indicator on there, which stayed on really nicely. I don't even know who makes these. They were just kind of randomly in a little tackle shop and I picked some up. And that with about a two and a half foot, maybe a three at times, uh, leader. Just whacking them, whacking them. No bigs, no bigs, like Colorado, but man, fun. Now, it's time to enjoy the fruits of this morning's dangle. We're gonna get a fire started, and we're gonna do these trout. Over the coals, you know how, you know how it is at camp. You gotta do it over the coals. Maybe a coal pop, doesn't get much better than that, so. OSG is trying to get a fire started right now. Does it look like it's uh, producing that well, well? It's smoking. It's smoking a little bit. I'll show you guys how to get a get a fire going quick. We're gonna get our camp knife out. We're gonna make some kindling, build it up, let the coal settle, cook them up. Is it? Is this way too skinny or what? It has dad on it. Poop. Bird poop. Kind of looks like bird poop, but. 
think it's actually a spider web. All right, we're gonna we're gonna stick them over here. We're gonna make a little Lincoln log situation. Lincoln logs. I don't have to build Lincoln logs. Why don't you build the build the rest? Okay. Just make like go side to side now. There you go. All right, do this one. Okay. It's nice and long. Okay. Now we're gonna go like that. Yeah. I know. Yeah, you know. I do like in logs at school, so I know how. Now, me and my buddy Mullet Man, we were making a bow the other day out of out of uh, bow dark and making some really fine shavings. And I always save that stuff for fires. So take that right there, and you're gonna put it all up in the middle of our little Lincoln log house. Okay. Okay. Just right in the middle there. There you go. Good job. Good Now, if you didn't already have a coal, you'd have to get a get a hot coal, and you could make a little bird nest out of these shavings, and then do it that way. Don't run over it, hon. Oh, you can see the leaves falling. Looks like Guess what, guys? What? Fire has begun. Man catch drought, man make fire. All right, now if you missed our Colorado vids, I show how I did do these tin foil wraps. The only thing we're missing is a lemon, just like Colorado, but uh, they turn out great with or without lemon. Cosmo SPG, some butter, wrap them up in these little boats, and our coals have burned down. It's been about, I'm gonna say 30 minutes or so. 30, 45 minutes since we got the uh, the fire going and we've let it burn down. So now the fire is, yeah, it's just some coals. And we're going to spread those out with a shovel and we're going to stick our fish in there and let them cook. And there we go, the old camp shovel. Just to smooth out all those coals, those are perfect for cooking right now. If we wanted to do the Dutch oven on top of that, that'd be perfecto too. But I think we're just gonna go straight caveman style. Wah bam, and wah bam. So 12 to 15 minutes, right on the coals. Just flipped them a bunch of times, like four or five times, every couple minutes basically. Got our fire going again with the coals. Looks amazing. Now, it's time to dig in to a fish. Usually when that butter is coming out, that's the deal. And I would, I would advise two layers of tinfoil if you're going to go direct on the coals. I just did one because I was running kind of low. And I'm losing my voice, guys, so I'm trying to hang in there. Oh, yeah, she's ready. Oh, yeah. Now, I already went ahead and I cooked uh, some skillet potatoes earlier today. That skin just falling off. Skillet taters. A little bit of macaroni and cheese in there. Can't beat a campfire trout. Skillet taters, a little bit of bacon in there. I mean, come on. Right by the fire with one of my favorite girls in the world, Emery Lauren. Yes. Mm. All right, that thing just flaked off the bone and that's what you look for. Eat it with a fork so you can use it to, as a tool to get it off the bones. Magnifique. Amazing guys, amazing camp experience too. When you're sitting there by the fire, it's always better. Mm. All right y'all, the fam and I are gonna shut it down. Thank you all for being here. If you want to get any of the new Guggen Squad gear, equipment, anything, link down in the description. Use my code LFG, save 10% at checkout, and get out in that great outdoors, man. Do something. Go camping, go fishing, go hunting. All of the above. Maybe all at once. Just 
Good for your soul, man. Good for your soul. I'm losing my voice, so I got to shut it down. Smash that like button, guys. If you got questions about trout, camping, anything, let me know in the comments down below. And I will see you back in the great outdoors on the next episode. Good night.